Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. This is in Florida, but tonight there's a search for this big reptile at a local school where students are being warned to stay away from the campus pond. We're going to begin, though, with a teacher accused of coming to school drunk at nearly four times the legal limit. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 6. The letter home to parents from the school district yesterday said the teacher admitted to drinking before school started and was not actually allowed near students. Today, Michael Fletcher appeared in court, but it gets very complicated from there. He was there for another drunk driving case. Rod Maloney explains. Well, this story certainly has turned a lot of heads here in White Lake. The school, the high school, ended up what amounts to lockdown yesterday, although many people didn't know it because the police department here in White Lake was arresting a teacher. I, I made a mistake. This is 44-year-old Michael Dennis Fletcher. Today, he appeared before Judge Joseph Fabrizio in Clarkston District Court after his arrest yesterday on an old drunk driving and driving with a suspended license bench warrant from last year. Do you have stable residents? Right now, I'll have to be out of the park by uh, the 30th. What Fletcher means is he'll be out of a campground by the end of the month. The Oakland County Probation Department said in court today he's been living outdoors all summer. So how do they find him? Well, it turns out he'd been hired as a teacher at Lakeland High School. White Lake Police tell Local 4 the principal noticed Fletcher had been late to work several days in a row. When he confronted Fletcher, the principal reported Fletcher smelled of alcohol, called the school's resource officer in. White Lake PD also said the officer did a sobriety test on him, discovered he was what amounts to super drunk, arrested him and took him to the police station. The school went on lockdown for the few minutes it took to get Fletcher from the office off of school property. I've been trying to uh, um, get myself clean. The idea is because of my last divorce and the idea of a medical issue that I, it's, it's detrimental. Judge entered a not guilty plea in the old bench warrant DUI case. In the meantime, he is not charged with anything with his arrest from yesterday. And it's mainly because nobody saw him actually driving. So it's going to be up to the prosecutor in Oakland County to decide whether there are any charges forthcoming from that arrest. Back to you. Yeah, and Rod, you, did, you mentioned no charges. Did Fletcher get bond? Yes, he, he received bond, but it gets complicated as the story has been all along. It was a $7,500 bond, 10%. He can put up $750, he can get out of jail, but only if he wears an alcohol tether. And in order to have an alcohol tether, you have to be in a house where the monitoring company can get to you. So living in a campground is not an option. So as it stands right now, he remains in the Oakland County Jail tonight. Yeah, complicated indeed. All right, thank you, Rod. Developing this evening, the search for a gator loose near a local school. Yes, you heard that right. We, we sometimes make fun of Florida stories. This one's here. And it is very real. Students at Bedford High School in Temperance being told to keep away from the school pond because this might be swimming in it. Jason Colthorpe here now, and I, I guess this is actually called a caiman, this reptile? It's a caiman lizard, yeah. See what happens when we make fun of Florida stories too often? We get them. what happens. Yeah. Uh, the caiman, it's a relative, though, of the alligator, and from this picture, that's clearly obvious. We sent Sky 4 over the pond, which is on the Bedford campus today, down in Monroe County. The biology pond is used by both junior and senior high school classes for academic study, but not right now, obviously. Everyone is being warned to stay away until animal experts can get in there and remove the reptile sometime in the next few days. Here's another closer look at that photo, by the way. While caimans share many characteristics with gators and crocodiles, they're usually smaller. We're told this one is about three feet long. It looks a little bigger in the photo. They're not indigenous to Michigan, but many people keep them as pets across the country. So it's quite possible someone is missing their pet caiman tonight. The whole thing a little crazy, but to be on the safe side, everyone, especially curious students, are being told to stay away from that pond. We'll let you know when this uh, surprising visitor to Michigan is out of there. Well, back to you guys. I don't imagine he'll do well when the weather turns either. So he might won't be like looking that. for someplace else to be then. Yeah, That's right. if they don't find him by then. All Thank right. you, Jason. The use of facial recognition technology by Detroit police has divided Detroiters, but 
It's now moving forward. Today, the police commission board passed the plan with an eight to three vote. That technology will be used to identify suspects using still pictures. It's not supposed to be used as a surveillance tool, and there are stiff penalties for misuse as well. The plan now heads to city council for approval. A 12 year old boy facing charges for a Snapchat threat that canceled classes for three days in Melvindale. As he appeared in court today, the prosecutor Kim Worthy sent a letter home to all parents in Wayne County. Coco McAvoy live in Melvindale. Coco, she wants parents to talk to their kids about this type of behavior. Yes, the prosecutor says a lot of times these kids say that these threats are jokes, but these jokes have serious consequences. So the prosecutor wants parents to talk to their kids before they make a big mistake. A 12 year old boy from Melvindale is facing serious charges for allegedly making a threat against schools. It was a little crazy because you don't really hear stuff like that around here. Angel Singleton and other parents sent their children back to school today after the district was closed for three days following the threat. It made me like nervous to even send them back today because we didn't really know for sure. The 12 year old allegedly sent a threat over Snapchat targeting students at Strong Middle School. The police and FBI investigated the threat and found the preteen boy responsible. Well, whatever he's learning at home, <laughs> that's what I think about it. He had to learn it from somewhere. That's why prosecutor Kim Worthy sent a letter to Wayne County Schools today asking parents to talk to their children about the consequences attached to making these threats. Singleton has already talked to her son. Been talking to him about it because he's asked, Mom, why can't I go to school? So he understands for the main part why. The prosecutor is hoping more parents do the same to avoid more threats and charges in the future. And the 12 year old boy was formally charged today. He was given a $7,500 personal bond. And if he's convicted, he'll be sentenced as a juvenile. Reporting live this evening, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. Yeah. Okay, Coco. Two 13 year old girls may face charges for making bomb threats. Meanwhile, at two Metro Detroit middle schools, police said the Chesterfield Township eighth graders confessed to using an app to make threats at Lance Cruz Middle School East and Roseville Middle School yesterday. Police say uh, they never posed any real threat to students. An East Point woman charged tonight accused of stealing from the charity where she worked. Susan Jack, now charged with embezzlement, we're told she stole $23,000 from her former employer, a charity organization called the Odd Fellows. She allegedly wrote bogus checks to herself, writing vacation or hotel reservation on the memo line and then misused money that was set aside for a youth group trip. She's due in court tomorrow in East Point. Investigators in Washtenaw County have recovered a lot of stolen stuff and they want to know if possibly some of it could be yours. This is what deputies found during an investigation of car break ins. This was in the Ypsilanti Township area. You're looking at a stolen gun, jewelry, products from a car. The thieves also stole tools and ammunition. If you think any of this might belong to you, call the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Department. Was the city of Troy discriminating against the Muslim community? That's a question raised in a new lawsuit filed by the Department of Justice. Let's bring in Sean Lay, who is live right now in Troy. And Sean, this is centered on a mosque that was actually never built. And the big picture here, Devin, is that you can't go anywhere in Troy without seeing new construction or a new business. In fact, the city says many of its city leaders right now are at another ribbon cutting. A group bought this building behind me saying it's the perfect place for its mosque and community center. But says Troy city leaders stand in the way. Now the Department of Justice is getting involved in a big way. The federal government actually filing a lawsuit against the city of Troy is really huge news. Local four legal analyst Neil Rockine responding to the Department of Justice hitting the city of Troy where it hurts with what could be a costly lawsuit for not allowing a group to take over this building it bought to convert it into a mosque. Approval not given when there is construction all over Troy. So it seems that in this very large city, one of the largest in the state of Michigan, I believe, that we could have found a small tract of land or a small place to accommodate a mosque. The Adam Community Center, a nonprofit 
finally went to the feds after searching for a place of worship in Troy for years, only to hit roadblock after roadblock. The Council on American Islamic Relations accuses Troy leaders of first only approving permits for businesses that would make the city money, a potential violation of what's called the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act. They determined that when the economy was on the upswing, that they didn't want to have any new places that were uh, tax exempt. The group found this site on Rochester Road that they say fits all city criteria, only to be denied again. There's no mosque in the city of Troy. There's no place for Muslims to worship or take part in any religious activities inside of the city. Now you normally think that the city of Troy is, is the government. This is like the government against the government. This is all caps against against you know small small letters so a battle shaping up here tonight the city of troy says it applies the same rules to land use to everyone sending his statement quote the city vehemently denies it engaged in any impropriety or discrimination and it is aggressively defending the lawsuit it's only just begun live in troy tonight sean late local four all right sean now to the UAW preparing for contract negotiations with General Motors to continue for days. We're, of course, already on day four. Today, a new letter to union members says progress is being made, but it also says talks could go into the weekend or beyond if a tentative deal isn't reached. So the talks are ongoing. We'll keep following, keep you posted here on the broadcast side and on ClickOnDetroit.com as well. Time now for a check of the national stories you'll see ahead of us coming up at 630 on the NBC Nightly News. Lester Holt back in New York City with a preview of what's coming up tonight. Lester. Hey, Devin and Sandra, coming up, we're going to tell you about the crew of a passenger plane putting that plane into an emergency descent going down nearly 30,000 feet in minutes. We'll look at what caused that terrifying scare. Plus, climate in crisis, we traveled to Iceland where scientists have found a way to take one of the causes of global warming out of the air. And this involves rocks, right? Yeah, scientists are trapping something that contributes to climate change in volcanic rocks. It's a pretty innovative mm -hmm. solution, and we'll let the experts explain it when we see on Nightly News. <laughs> Fascinating. All right. Thanks, Lester. They came in second place on the finale of America's Got Talent, but they are still number one right here in Detroit. No doubt about it. Up next, the special honor waiting for the DYC, the Detroit Youth Choir, when they get home. Ben. Devin, another night of sleeping with the windows open, beautiful and comfortable conditions, but we may need that AC one more time before fall. We'll look at the numbers next. Still struggling sometimes with um, just having a normal life for her. Meet an educator going above and beyond to make a girl feel like she's not alone during recess. It's a story you don't want to miss. On the next Live in the D, Downton Abbey, Brad Pitt and Rambo Yo, which movie should you see? Plus the beer hall that's a game changer for burgers. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. on Local